Uh, yep, they're out. Lost this one. Anthony Edwards leading his team. Sweep, 122-116. It's their first playoff series win in 20 years. Edwards, 31 of his 40 came in the second half. Look, Devin Booker had 49 points. Kevin Durant had 33 points and nine rebounds. But it just, it wasn't enough, Sham. So what happens with Vogel? What happens with this big three? Anything? This is the third highest paid team oh. in the NBA. They have a luxury tax player threshold of almost $260 million. They have championship aspirations, like you said, Michelle. And to get swept in the first round, that's not how this season was supposed to go. Sources tell me the Suns will consider a coaching change, at the very least adjustments to Frank Vogel's Dang. coaching staff. And Matt Ishbia put forth a five-year, $31 million contract to Frank Vogel last year he's one year into that deal so madison has put in a lot of resources to this organization he's put his money where his mouth is when it comes to spending on his, on this team and you look at the big three it all revolves around kevin durant devin booker bradley beal those three guys never really gelled and you can look at injuries bradley beal was in and out of the lineup they acquired him in that big trade last year and he didn't fully excel at that point guard position the suns envisioned him being a table setter for mm. Kevin Durant and Brad Beal uh, and, and Devin Booker, but he, but Brad Beal never emerged as that full force guy. And I'm told Kevin Durant had real issues with the offense, the way it was ran, um, and him feeling like he was relegated to being in the corner and watching pick and rolls uh -oh. by Devin Booker, by Bradley Beal. And so that the offensive side is something that the Suns, if they're bringing this whole team back, they're going to have to address it. At the same time, though, the onus does fall on the players when it comes to leadership, when it comes to, the, to this big three, the players not believing that they fully address the issue in-house and Kevin Durant not going to the coach and telling him and, and really changing what was yeah. going on there. And neither of them stepped up. This is a big summer for the Suns. This is Devin Booker's franchise. This is his team to lead. And we'll see where this goes in the summer. Okay, so let's start with Vogel, Lou. I mean, you heard he's one year into a five-year deal. What, what do you do? It's tough because what I, what I saw was it was a very top-heavy basketball team. I was saying it throughout the year. It was flash without the fire. A lot of great names, a lot of great basketball players, but um, I think they took chemistry for granted. I think they took their health for granted. You know, guys are in and out of the lineups. I felt like they thought they had enough firepower where they can turn it on and off and, and flip that switch when it came playoff time. And you were, looking, you were looking down the barrel at a Minnesota Timberwolves team that was fully loaded and prepared to go and, and, and was ready to compete against anyone. Um, and they showed that by that sweep. You know, that was a, a, a collective. That was a basketball team. Even the moments where... Anthony Edwards is getting trapped. He's kicking that ball out willingly to a Mike Conley or a Jaden McDaniels, trusting his teammates, trusting the process of allowing other guys to have an impact on his basketball game. We never saw that with Phoenix this year. We never saw that camaraderie. We never saw that togetherness. It no. never looked like they enjoyed being on the basketball floor together. I'm sure it's not personal problems, but when you can't get it together on the basketball end, everything is magnified. It brings attention to everything. And so... Back to Frank Vogel, I think those type of things he can't coach. You can't coach guys wanting to be on the court together. Mm -hmm. You can't coach buy-in. You can only put them in a position to. And so it's a 50-50 thing with me. Obviously, when you get swept and you have talent like that, something has to be addressed. And it's usually the coach that you, you take a hard look at first. You know, but I, I think this is both sides. I think this roster is, is kind of bad built. And, you know, maybe you can make some adjustments to the coaching staff where um, you find – um, something, something there that can help this basketball team move forward because nobody's going anywhere. You know, sound like it. Yeah, they're locked into these deals. They don't have any draft picks to play with. It's going to be hard to kind of make some trades. You know, obviously, Brad Beal will be somebody that's probably going to likely be the fall guy. You know, usually somebody is, has to be blamed for these type of things, and, it, and it'll probably be Bradley Beal. And, Oops. You know, it's just a bad bill all the way. When you get when you get swept, everything is on the table. Everything is free game. So God, I love it when teams talk smack. Right. Oh, social media is fun. <laughs> Chandler, like that, that, like that's the thing. Vogel's one part, Big Three's the other part. I, I don't know that there's much room to do anything. I mean, it seems that Vogel might be the casualty here, but I don't think this is a problem. I think, like Lou said, when you look at the Minnesota Timberwolves, that's a team. They played together. They gelled. They had chemistry. The Suns, it's, it felt cool. It looked sexy on paper. And we thought with that big three offensively, how are we going to guard them? It just never panned out. 
And I think it starts with never having a point guard. That was always weird. You try to turn Brad Beal has been one of the best two guards in the NBA. Devin Booker, same thing. You try and turn him into a point guard and take away what he does best. So I think offensively right away, the fact that they didn't make an adjustment or make a deal to get a point guard, they get Isaiah Thomas, they don't play him at all. That that was kind of an issue to me. Um, they didn't have a setup guy. And we talked about all year long, especially Bradley Beal, his body language, you could just tell he wasn't stoked with this offense. He was sitting in the corner. He wasn't thrilled. Even Book's body language, Kevin Durant's body language, they weren't happy, and they didn't. They, they they just never got going. They never had the consistency, and you can see getting swept now. Everything's under a magnifying glass, and they're probably going to try and make a move. Or I don't think you move Frank Vogel first year of a five-year, thirty-one million dollar deal. I don't see them getting off him. I think they try and shop. You know, Brad Beal would be the first one that I would look at getting rid of. But what can you get back for him? But they have to build this team differently. They have to find a point guard to set these guys up. And this is crazy. This is one of the. This is one of the best you know teams ever on paper that just didn't work out and, and and it ended in a sweep that i don't think anybody saw coming i mean it, to, to not even like accidentally stumble into a win when you have those guys um it's kind of crazy but there was a lot being made of their lack of resources and assets so now what yeah, I mean, this is an expensive team like i said third highest payroll <laughs> their biggest needs going into this offseason though they need a point guard First and foremost, they need someone that can set the table for Bradley Beal, Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, because too often you saw Brad Beal, Kevin, Dur uh, and Kevin Durant, and really Devin Booker, all three bring the ball up, Man. be tasked to be the point guard. And when you have other teams picking you up 94 feet and you're Devin Booker and Brad Beal, your goal has always been to be an assassin scorer, be a guy that can play make in the half court setting. That wore them down. And getting a point guard to set the table, I think that's going to be utmost importance. This is a team that's locked in really on six guys returning next year. Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, Brad Beal, Yusuf Nurkic, okay. Grayson Allen, and Royce O'Neal. They want to re-sign him as a free agent this summer. They do have two first-round draft picks they can trade. They have this year's number 22 pick. They have the 2031 first-round pick they can trade on draft night. They also have a 2028 Celtics protected second rounder they can trade as well. So those are the things that you can play with potentially in trades, but they have a decision to make. Do you put this all on the, on the coaching staff and bring back the same roster? Do you tweak mm. one or the other? This is Kevin... Durant's, you know, he's he's. This is the, the twilight of his career yeah. right now, as far as his peak. He's still playing at an exceptional level. What do you do? Do you have to go in a different route with him? Clearly, this is Devin Booker's franchise. He is not going anywhere. I, I think the what, what you address is Bradley Beal. Obviously, he wasn't stoked to be there. Um, you could just tell by the body, body language. Send send him somewhere where he can be happy and he can flourish. He can be Bradley Beal. He can go out and score 25 to 30 a night um, and carry a basketball team. But. They didn't guard. They didn't defend anybody. You know, they they look into going into the um, going into the offseason, look into some wing defenders, uh, two way point guard, somebody that can score the basketball, that can set the table and guard as well. And I think that makes a hell of a difference for this Phoenix Suns team moving forward.